Right. Okay. In case if the uh, actually it was a time eight fifty k better. No, okay. Well, Madhya Lagi po the same link to join one immediately. Okay. Well, topic I put. I'll complete within the time. In case topic is in the middle, you can join with same link again. No problem. Right. So. Yeah, yesterday we have completed a uh, major portion of the respiration. Uh, we have completed the gases transport. Okay, so here uh, the cells they release CO two. The CO two enters uh, RBC uh, from the plasma uh, because uh, in the cell the CO two partial pressure is more than the blood. So from 45 to 40, it reaches to blood. In the blood from plasma to it enters into RBC. Uh, in the RBC, it combines with the H2O in the presence of carbonic anhydrase. You remember this enzyme, and it is converted into H2CO3. Uh, this H2CO3 is immediately dissociated into HCO3 minus and H plus. Same in the presence of same enzyme. Uh, so this H plus combines with the HPO2 actually. So to liberate O2, that O2 is given to tissues or cells. And this HCO3 minus immediately comes out of the uh, RBC. So to compensate the loss of negative ion, the chloride ions enter into the uh, RBCs. So that uh, phenomena is generally known as Chloride ship, you can also call it as, uh, you know, the hamburger phenomena or hamburger's effect. Okay. So, in this uh, way, the CO2 is carried to the lungs. So, here in the lungs, the reverse chloride ship takes place and HCO3 minus giants with the HHB, which is formed here. So, this HHB, from this HHB, H plus, Combines with the HCO3 minus to form carbonic acid again in the presence of carbonic anhydrase engine, and it is split into CO2 plus H2O. And uh, here the partial pressure of CO2 is 45, and here it is 40. So CO2 is simply diffused into the alveoli, that is, to the lungs. So whenever the CO2 reaches to the lungs, the expiration takes place, the CO2 is set out. So yesterday we have completed so far. Uh, up to here. So, this is uh, the diagram's explanation. Yesterday, I could not uh, write. So, today, I have completed it. Uh, then, yeah, so this is total. Yeah, there is this term. I don't know whether it is asked or not. Alden effect. So, we have seen the Bohr effect where uh, the effect of uh, you know the co2 okay so it decreases the affinity between the hb and o2 so opposite to bohr effect there is this effect called harlan effect oxygenate blood blood that means the systemic blood has a reduced affinity for carbon dioxide. Okay, so we we have seen that the carbon dioxide is transported in three forms. One is dissolved form, that is about seven percent. Okay, so we are talking about this. So we are talking about dissolved transport of carbon dioxide. So here in the Haldane effect whenever there is more oxygen okay so the plasma or the hemoglobin hemoglobin uh, contains less affinity to the carbon dioxide that is first point thus the ability of hemoglobin to carry increased amounts of carbon dioxide in the deoxygenated state as a, opposed to oxygenated state see here what happens Simply, we should remember one thing very clear. If at all the oxyhemoglobin content is more, 
that is in fresh blood, purified blood or oxygenated blood. So the affinity of hemoglobin to CO2 is reduced. That is actually called an uh, effect in the book. It is given, uh, you know, uh, not clear, but simply we should remember one thing. In the blood, if the HPO2 uh, saturation is more, the affinity to CO2 with This way, the dotted line. Right. So this is what I'm going. Right. Anyway, that is okay. If more HBO two, less saturation of CO two with HB. Okay. R and less dissolve. Uh, uh, what we call the, the CO2 dissolving capacity is also reduced. That is Halden effect. That's it. So in resting, uh, once again, this is uh, I would like to revise. In resting conditions, only 22% of total oxygen we have uh, out of total which we have inspired from outside, only 22% of oxygen is utilized. That is almost 1 by 50. Okay, the remaining 68% of oxygen which we have inspired, that is 4 by 5th percent of, uh, you know, oxygen is always in reserved uh, state in the blood. Okay, so whenever there is no breathing, there is uh, in case of, uh, you know, cardiac arrest, okay, temporarily. So this reserved oxygen, so helps for the survival of the individual up to four or five minutes. So in recent uh, periods, we have seen CPR. So in that uh, states, this reserved oxygen helps. And this reserved oxygen also utilized are dissociated from the hemoglobin whenever there is vigorous body exercise okay while running or like that okay so at that moment so almost 62 percent of uh, oxygen is uh, released uh, at 22 mm hg of PO2, that is partial pressure that is different uh, to the percentage at this time hpo2 saturation is 35 percent Okay, and almost 75% saturated oxygen is released to tissues. Okay, during strenuous or vigorous exercise. Okay, so that is we have already discussed. Okay, One slide needs to be. That is a heading of complex this one. Yeah. Yeah. So here, this is a regulation of, uh, you know, respiration. First of all, let's discuss about the regulation of uh, respiratory movements, okay, breathing movements, how it is. Uh, regulated. So, here there is a term called herring Brewer complex. Okay, so generally the respiratory movements are initially they are involuntary. So, then uh, whenever we need more, uh, you know, uh, oxygen, so then it will become voluntary. So basically, the breathing movements are uh, involuntary activities, right? See the medulla oblongata. So are the you can also call it as stock of brain. 
this part. Okay, so it plays an important role in the regulator, regulation of breathing movements. First of all, in the medulla oblongata, there are two centers. They are called inspiratory and expiratory, expiratory centers. Okay, inspiratory and expiratory centers. Inspiratory set. So this is how the movements are, uh, you know, uh, what we call the regulated let's see so first of all whenever we need oxygen in the body so the body cells which are supplied with the you know uh, the autonomous and uh, what's that? autonomous nervous system uh, autonomous nerve endings they send a signal to inspiratory center Okay, so inspiratory center, it, it stimulates or it gives orders, okay, so via spinal nerves to these three, diaphragm, intercostal muscles, okay, so inspiratory center, it stimulates or it, it orders, it, it, give, it sends sim, stimulus to the diaphragm and intercostal muscles via spinal nerves okay that that makes them for their contraction okay yesterday we have seen the breathing movement okay so in which the contraction of diaphragm and intercostal muscles expands or widens the thoracic cavity thoracic cavity will become wide okay broad so that leads to low partial pressure or low pressure within the what we call the uh, lungs okay so that that causes forcible entry of you know oxygen or uh, air into the lungs that is called inspiration so when we inspire okay so the expansion of lungs expansion of uh, you know uh, chest takes place so there are stretch receptors within the lungs and uh, chest inner side of the stretch uh, chest so these stretch receptors they identify this broadening of the thoracic part or lungs okay so that uh, expansion or broadening of chest is identified uh, by the same uh, you know autonomous nerve nerve endings okay they take this uh, stimulus through the uh, vagus nerve, okay, within the vagus nerve, there will be an autonomous uh, nerve endings, okay, so they take this stimulus to inspiratory center via vagus, okay, so now the inspiratory center is stopped, okay, so then this thoracic uh, sorry, diaphragm and intercostal muscles, their contraction is also stopped. So with that, the inspiration is stopped. Okay. So, and uh, we have discussed about the expiration. Expiration is, so it's a passive uh, process. So just relaxation of diaphragm and intercostal muscles. Okay. So takes place in the expiration. Okay. That make them to, to become normal. Okay, the, in the inspiration, the diaphragm becomes flat and intercostal muscles are, you know, contracted. Okay, after inspiration, they will become, they will come to nor, their uh, normal uh, positions. So that makes initiation of expiration. That means thoracic cavity uh, becomes, uh, you know, um, uh, normal condition. Okay, that exerts pressure on you know lungs okay that leads to expiration okay again same thing uh, is repeated okay so after expiration okay again uh, the inspiratory center is activated that causes low pressure that is widening of chest takes place okay so this inhibitory uh, inspiratory impulse is stopped okay 
inspiratory center is activated, inspiration is initiated. So this whole process, word explain jayadan, introduce jayadan ki Herring Brewer ka reflex ka Herring Brewer ka reflex so inspirator center ki first stimulus belly inspiration jari ki malli adi stop hai malli again uh, expiration jari ki malli inspiratory uh, center when it activate hai yadda varaku jari ki it wati whole reflex or cycle is known as herring brewer reflex okay so this herring brewer reflex is According to the demand of according to the demand of oxygen, the breathing is uh, regulated. Okay, via autonomous nervous system. Okay, sympathetic uh, and parasympathetic nerv nervous system. That is autonomous nervous system, uh, vagus nervous nerves, spinal uh, nerves, and the medulla oblongata are inspiratory and expiratory center. Whenever we need oxygen. Okay, the inspiratory center is activated. Okay, whenever the inspiration is completed, it is inhibited. Then expiratory center is activated. So the expiration takes place. Again, the inspiratory center is activated like this. So this whole process is simply known as herring brewer reflex. You just remember uh, that uh, term. Okay, so then. And there is another uh, concept. So, a special respiratory rhythm center, RRC, is present in the brain. Okay. So, it regulates breathing rate. Okay. So, uh, there is another center in the pons veroli of, uh, you know, medulla oblongata. Okay, of the brain stem. Brain stem is nothing but the medulla oblongata. Okay, so that is called as pneumotaxic center. <clears throat> pneumotaxic center is where the pneumotaxic center is present in the pons where we are stem of the brain. Okay, the pons where we are pons simply so it is present there it also regulate the uh, the inspiratory and expiratory movements pneumotaxic center so pneumotaxic center is so it can moderate the function of the respiratory rhythm center or herring brewer reflex both are same. Respiratory rhythm center means inspiratory and expiratory center, simply. Okay, that is moderated by this pneumotaxic center of the pons veroli. Right? So, its signal, its signal can reduce the duration of inspiration. So, the respiratory rhythm is under. Whenever we need more uh, oxygen or we need more ventilation, that means more CO2 is uh, should be sent out. So then, this pneumotax center, it sends signal to inspiratory and uh, expiratory center or respiratory rhythm center. So the ventilation becomes faster. The breathing becomes rapid. Okay. So that is uh, pneumotax center, second one. So you can remember this as, you know, inspiratory, expiratory center. Okay. And it is regulated by pneumotaxic center of pons. Okay. There is another uh, sensitive area that regulates the breathing movement. That is chemosensitive area. So it is also present in the stem of the brain. Just beside the uh, respiratory rhythm center or inspiratory expiratory center. That is called chemosensitive area in the brain, medulla oblongata. It is highly sensitive to CO2 and H plus ions. Now let's see the diagram. See, so this is normal condition. Uh, blood pH is depends on amount of CO2 present, volume of CO2 present in the blood. Okay, more CO2, 
So the pH is reduced. Okay. Here, stimulus a rising level of CO2 in tissues lowers the blood pH. Okay, rising level of CO2 in tissues lowers the blood. CO2 verute H2CO3 echo form of the Then, acidity and the verute. So, acidity very in the pH tagging the end Okay, so when we are exercising, we release more CO2 that decreases the pH. pH. So, now the receptors are chemo receptor center. Okay, so here. Medulla detects decrease in pH of cerebral uh, pH of CSF. Okay, E CO2 Pergadavala pH Tagiri. So it reaches to cerebrospinal fluid through the blood. Okay. And here uh, in the carotid arteries or main arteries, sensor sensors in major blood vessels detect decrease in pH of blood. Okay. So, if only under control of this uh, chemo sensor sensitive areas of brain, sensor which are present in the major blood vessels, they also detect the lowering of the pH. So, these uh, stimuli, both these stimuli, okay, so they are reached to the brain, particularly. So, control center are, uh, you know, the RRC area of this uh, pons and medulla oblongata. So medulla receives signals from major blood vessels. Okay. So then this brain sends signals to the this rib cage or intercostal muscles and the diaphragm. Signals from medulla and pons to rib muscles and the diaphragm increase the rate and depth of ventilation and the breathing and okay that should be sent out of the body okay co2 level decreases so restoring the ph to normal manam ekwa you know co2 blood lo unnappudu ekwa breathing anedi vastundi dan valla em avutundi more co2 is sent out dan valla malli h2co3 levels tagi okay co2 anedi bayata kelladam valla so the homeostasis is retained. So this is uh, one kind of explanation of the uh, breathing movements. Uh, then, yeah. Then another one is fourth one is receptors associated with aortic artery uh, and carotid artery. Also recognize change in CO2 and H plus ions concentration in that diagram with the emission and send the signal to RRC. Okay, so and uh, the pneumotoxic uh, center PTC for necessary action. Okay, then all uh, ventilation and the or breathing movements and the period. So uh, necessary actions will be taken by the brain. Okay, that orders to intercostal muscles and diaphragm and uh, uh, you know uh, lungs to breathe more rapidly so that eliminate the excess CO2 from the body. And so in this uh, breathing movement regulation, there is no role of the oxygen, only CO2 can stimulate the various, uh, you know, breathing centers of our body. So, uh, CO2 plays no special role in the regulation of the breathing movements. And then some of the disorders or diseases related to the respiration. Okay. So, here, first one is asthma. What is asthma? So, due to inflammation, in the what I like? Due to inflammation in bronchi and bronchioles. So, due to infections, the inflammation takes place uh, by mesangial cells or macrophages, which are present in the you know, uh, bronchi and bronchioles of the windpipe. Okay, so that 
makes breathing be very difficult. Okay, so then we'll aim out the okay? breathing and uh, custom model. So, due to inflammation in bronchi and bronchioles, simple, right? So, that causes cough, wheezing. Okay, so mainly cough and wheezing takes place. Mainly, so why this occurs? It is mainly due to allergies that cause release of histamine that cause inflammation. Okay, so allergies and it won't be hypersensitivity. So, here due to some dust allergy or uh, whatever, those allergies they will go and uh, joins the membrane bound uh, uh, antibodies, Ig type of antibodies which are attached to the mast cells. Whenever they are joined by these uh, allergies, the mast cells, okay, base of it, they are excited, they release their, uh, you know, uh, granules which contain the histamine, serotonin, heparin, all those allergic substances that make the inflammation in the bronchi and bronchioles. So that is the asthma and emphysema. Emphysema. So emphysema is a condition. So where alveolar walls are damaged and it makes reduction of area of gases exchange. Okay, alveolar walls, they put in the gases exchange area and tagging. Okay, so and also uh, the alveolar uh, epithelium becomes more fibrous and less elastic. Actually, uh, alveoli uh, they are elastic in nature. Okay, for uh, easy expansion and relaxation of the lungs. But in this condition, in the emphysema. Okay, so its epithelium becomes more rough or fibrous in nature and uh, that leads to less elastic. So, the breathing uh, or expansion of lungs become very uh, less, uh, lesser than the normal. So, that is emphysema due to damage at alveolar one. So, it, uh, the major cause is smoking. Okay, so due to smoking, the alveolar walls are damaged. Right. Another disease is bronchitis. So, it is nothing but the, a kind of asthma. So, inflammation of bronchi. So, occurs that is called bronchitis. So, swelling of mucous membrane of the bronchi takes place. So, that causes this bronchitis. So, due to this, increased mucus production takes place from the uh, mucosa of the bronchus. So, and the bronchi diameter is also reduced. So, that results ultimately, so, what we call wet cuff. Wet cuff uh, is occurred, okay, uh, with thick sputum, thick mucus is released, okay. Continuously, the sputum cuff is occurred with thick sputum takes place in the bronchitis. That is nothing but the kind of asthma. So then pneumonia. So pneumonia is a, a kind of, you know, uh, a respiratory problem. So mostly uh, it occurs in, you know, uh, general pneumonia uh, is occurred in cold. pneumonia right. Here, So, lung infections mainly by streptococcus pneumonia is a bacteria. So, whenever this bacterial infection is occurred, the pneumonia is uh, occurred. So, sometimes the pneumonia is also may uh, occur due to viruses, particularly cold virus and some mycoplasma like uh, prokaryotes and some protozoans also uh, causes the, you know, uh, Pneumonia. Okay, what happens in the pneumonia? Inflammation of lungs takes place. Accumulation of mucus in alveoli. Okay, so what does it do? 
it impairs the gas exchange because alveolar filled with the mucus. So that impairs the gas exchange, that is pneumonia. Okay. If at all it is not treated in time. Okay. So due to pneumonia, also the person may die because there is no proper gases exchange. So oxygen is not reached to the blood and cells. So if it is uh, not treated in time, uh, it, it causes the death, the pneumonia. So what is pneumonia? Inflammation in lungs, the more mucus is accumulated in the alveoli that leads to uh, low exchange of oxygen and CO2. That may, uh, if at all it is not treated in time, the death occurs. Emphysema, chronic bronchitis, asthma, so come under chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases. Just full form and only. So emphysema, chronic bronchitis, asthma, all these come under a common name called chronic obstructive. Obstruct out of the matter. Uh, respiratory passage, uh, pulmonary diseases. So that is about the some uh, general uh, respiratory diseases. And then some occupationally uh, resp respiratory, disease, respiratory diseases can also be seen. Okay. So that is mostly occurred in, uh, you know, in uh, mining, rock mining areas, grinding and stone breaking industries. The occupational respiratory diseases are very, very common. Here, one is asbestosis. Asbestosis is a kind of occupational and a respiratory problem. Chronic means longer. So, chronic exposure to asbestos in asbestos uh, industries. Okay. So, that uh, causes a kind of, uh, you know, uh, breathing difficulty that is asbestosis symbol. And then silicosis it is also a kind of, uh, you know, occupational uh, abnormality of the lungs. So exposure to silica dust, particularly in mining, uh, you know, rock mining, uh, quarry. Okay, sand quarries low, uh, silicosis and, and the long term fungus the silicosis and a condition already so, uh, that occurs. And this is siderosis. You remember this point. What is siderosis? Siderosis is the accumulation of the iron particles, uh, iron particles in the tissues. Okay, so due to this pneumoconiosis, hyperferemia hemosiderosis, all these conditions are uh, occurred. So, particularly the hemosiderosis causes, so these two are the, uh, you know, peripheral, okay. So, but uh, hemosiderosis occurs in the, alve uh, the alveolar hemorrhage, that means, so leakage of blood in the alveoli takes place due to the accumulation of the iron in the uh, alveoli. Okay, so that is uh, simply siderosis means accumulation of iron particles in the tissues, various tissues. And finally, the black lung disease. So it is nothing but the, so due to inhalation of coal dust. So the workers who are working in the coal mines, they are suffered with this black lung disease. This also uh, impairs the breathing, simply. Right, so then next major topic is uh, cellular respiration. This is uh interesting topic and uh, we should learn this uh, very for a sound knowledge of uh, you know what we call the uh, cellular respiration is very very essential for various examinations so, right the main objective of cellular respiration is to produce energy, simple. Energy produced by main object of the, you know, uh, cellular respiration. Digested food products are oxidized and energy is produced. Okay. So, digested foods are going to be oxygen in the presence or absence of oxygen. They are oxidized and energy is produced. 
only 30% of energy is converted into ATP. And okay, glucose low, not 20, the other foodstuffs low, not 20, uh, you know, static energy low or chemical energy low. Only 30% of energy is converted into ATP. And 30% energy is utilized for the formation of ATP. The remaining energy is liberated as heat. Okay, so we all know that cellular respir respiration is a catabolic process where the molecules are degraded or uh, broken down. So there are three stages in cell respiration. We should uh, remember forever. Telsna Vallu, revise and code, Telian Vallu. So it is good to Glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and uh, you know, electron transport. Glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and electron transport. So these three are the major steps that are involved in the, you know, uh, the cellular respiration, glycolysis, the cycle, and electron transport. These are the major pathways or steps which are involved in the cellular respiration. So glycolysis. So what is glycolysis? So glycolysis means lysis of the glucose. So, in which the glucose so glucose is converted into two pyruvic acid. So, the point is basic. So, what is glycolysis? Glucolysis. Okay, glucose breakdown takes place in the glycolysis. Okay, so here one glucose ultimately produces two pyruvic acids in the glycolysis. And you should remember this is very, very uh, important point. So it is also occurred not only in aerobic organisms, but also occurred in anaerobic organisms, except so a virus, there is no, in viruses, there is no cellular 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 compartments okay so it doesn't apply to the uh, virus uh, molecules or virus or organisms but glycolysis occurs both in prokaryotic or most of the anaerobic organisms like parasites uh, internal parasites and also occurred in aerobic organisms also okay and it is also known as emp pathway emden meyerhoff and parnas pathway so they explained, uh, they deduced the glycolytic pathway in 1930. So, where does it occur? It occurs in cytosol or cytoplasm. This is a basic point. Glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm. Glycolysis is defined as the sequence of reactions converting glucose to either pyruvate or to lactate or lactic acid with the production of ATP. Okay, so glycolysis is the glucose energy either pyruvate ga convert out in the lactate ga convert out in the. So uh, that uh, pathway is generally we can define it as glycolysis. Okay, the sequence of reactions converting a glucose to two pyruvates or pyruvate uh, or lactate. Okay, so ATP is also produced in this uh, pathway, glycolytic pathway. Right. So glycolysis occurs both in absence of, absence of oxygen and the presence of, of oxygen also in the kind of Japan. Aerobic condition is the anaerobic condition is the organisms. And lactate is end product under anaerobic condition. Okay, so after pyruvic acid formation, the pyruvic acid is converted into lactic acid. Okay, most of the anaerobic organisms they convert the py pyruvate into lactic acid or lactate. In aerobic condition, pyruvate is formed, okay, which is then oxidized to CO2 and H2. This is complete oxidation. Aerobic condition lay out in the so complete oxidation of uh, glucose to express ultimately to release CO2 and H2O. Whereas in anaerobic condition, 
Okay. So the pyruvate, which is formed at the end of the glycolysis, it undergoes fermentation to produce either ethanol or lactic acid. Okay. So that is uh, some uh, uh, silent features. So glycolysis is a major pathway for ATP synthesis in tissues lacking mitochondria, erythrocytes, cornea, and lens. Okay, so A tissues low A places low nite, you know, mitochondria undado, like erythrocytes gauchu, corneal cells gauchu, lens cells gauchu, we flow mitochondria undado. Abdiya karabat kupote yoka pathway ki option undado, that is, you know, the glycolysis. There is no Krebs cycle, there, is, there will be no electron transport in such uh, mitochondria less. Uh, cells like uh, erythrocytes, cornea, and lens. Okay, so glycolysis is a central metabolic pathway. So many intermediates of the Madhyalo Pharma twenty many substances. Okay, so they are they inter they are interconnected with other pathways of our body. But covered in this central, uh, you know, um, metabolic pathway. That's the gist of. The intermediates of glycolysis are useful for synthesis of amino acids and fats also. That is glucogliogenesis. <clears throat> that is, <coughs> these are some points of glycolysis. So reactions of glycolysis. Okay, glycolysis can be divided into three phases. Among. Energy investment phase in which the ATP is utilized. It is also known as priming phase and splitting phase in which the hexose is splitted into two trioses. Okay, so R6 carbon containing, uh, you know, the hexose like fructose is uh, divided into two, uh, it is divided into half. So to form two trioses and ultimately the third phase where the ATP is generated, that is energy generation. Phase. Oh, sorry, man. Okay, so the glucose obtained from the diet through the intestinal hydrolysis of lactose, sucrose, glycogen, or starch, whatever it may be, is brought into the exhaust phosphate pool. Okay, so cellulo exhaust phosphate pool and into the and accumulated uh, exhausts. So through the action of exokinase, exokinase and in the enzyme, a pool of this so, in first step of the glycolysis, the free glucose is phosphorylated to glucose 6-phosphate by this enzyme, you know, hexokinase. So, this is first step of the glycolysis. Anyway, it's a direct pathway that I can. So, in the first step, there are total 10 steps are involved in this, you know, uh, the uh, pathway, glycolytic pathway. So, glucose in the presence of ATP. Okay. So, and hexokinase or glucokinase in liver, hexokinase in all the cells <laughs> with the help of magnesium ions. Okay. It is converted into glucose 6 phosphate. That is, it is a phosphorylation reaction and it is a rate limiting uh, reaction. See, it is not a reversible reaction. Shown here. Glucose nunchi, glucose six phosphate form god of the irreversible reaction. Okay. And next, glucose six phosphate immediately it is isomerized with the help of enzyme phosphose. Okay. Exose, isomerase. So from glucose to fructose and then form of the isomerase and enzyme in the presence of magnesium ions. So it converts glucose six phosphate into fructose six phosphate. And then the fructose six phosphate. So, with the help of another ATP enzyme, it receives another phosphate. It's uh, it uh, you know first carbon. Okay, so to form fructose one comma six bisphosphate or biphosphate. Okay, rendu uh, same meaning. So that means two another rendu phosphate lo a place lo first carbon paina and sixth carbon. So here you can see fructose one comma six. Uh, fructose 6 phosphate and phosphorylation reaction. Okay, so that is the third reaction. He is also 
the regulating step in the glycolysis where the reaction is irreversible reaction, one side, one way. So fructose 1,6 biphosphate by is divided into dihydroxy stone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. And this uh, reaction is catalyzed by aldolase HI. Okay, which is splitting HI. Right? So, one is dihydroxy estrone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is formed from fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate or biphosphate. Okay, one minute look close out to the Malli Jaina. Okay, so then out of two, uh, you know, triosis. Okay, so this dihydroxy estrone phosphate in the presence of an enzyme. Uh, phosphohexose isomerase. It is it is also converted into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Already manaki kadoko glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. This DHAP is also converted into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Okay, so and then manaki glucose into two glyceraldehyde 3 phosphates and it will be ready to go. Right. So glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate in the presence of enzyme glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase. Okay, so the dehydrogenase NAD and involved in the it may take up the hydrogens or it may receive the electrons. Okay, so anyway, or it may lose uh, you know H plus ions or it may attain or uh, acquire the H plus ions texture whenever there is a dehydrogenase enzyme is present. Okay, so here due to additional uh, receiving of the H plus ions, sorry, uh, electrons. Okay, so here what happens? One substrate level phosphate is attached to this glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate at first carbon. So glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is converted to 1, 3 by phospho or bisphospho, uh, you know, uh, glycerate. Okay, so one comma three bypass for glycerate at form of the substrate level phosphate relation. So you can do it phosphate, uh, inorganic phosphate. And so this glycerol head uh, three phosphate and a so bind out to me. So at first carbon traces, so that makes it one comma three bypass for glycerate, glyceric acid. But then this is also a reversible reaction and iodoacetate and arsenate are the inhibitory uh, drugs of this uh, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme. Okay. So anyway, 1 comma 3 bypass for glycerate. Here it is dephosphorylated in the presence of enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase. Are you there? Unarama? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Right. substrate is Mali Each reaction will be explained again. So here from uh, free pyrophosphate, one phosphate is transferred to first carbon of the glycerol head three phosphate. So it will become one comma three uh, bisphosphoglycerate or bisphosphoglycerate and phospho. Glycerate kinase, a kinase and rostundo, you should remember. So there is involvement of either phosphor, uh, phosphate removal or phosphate uh, acceptance. Okay, Kada, removal of one phosphate takes place by kinase enzyme, phosphoglycerate kinase. So that is given to ADP in the presence of magnesium ions to form an ATP, a single ATP from a single glyceraldehyde. You can have any glyceraldehyde, two glyceraldehyde. Not only one ATP, two ATPs are found. Okay, so internal uh, background. Right. So now this uh, one comma three bisphosphoglycerate will become three phosphoglycerate. So due to the phosphoglycerate kinase action. So, 3 phosphoglycerate and then mutase and the mutation lanti cherries are third portion low nut mati yoka phosphorus phosphate and then second carbon pike shift out. So, that, that is called so glycerol head uh, phosphate mutase. Anata. Okay, so to form 2 phosphoglycerate, what does it mean? 
ఈ త్రీ పాస్పేట్ గ్లిజరేట్ లో థర్డ్ కార్బన్ పైన పాస్పేట్ అనేది ఉంటుంది టూ పాస్పేట్ గ్లిజరేట్ లో సెకండ్ కార్బన్ పైన పాస్పేట్ అనేది ఉంటుంది అండ్ దెన్ టూ పాస్పోర్ట్ గ్లిజరేట్ ఇన్ ద ప్రెన్స్ ఆఫ్ మెగ్నీషియం అండ్ హెచ్ టూ బై అన్ ఎంజైమ్ కాల్ ఎనోలేస్ ఇనోలేజ్ ఆర్ ఎనోలేజ్ అనే ఎంజైమ్ సమక్షంలో టూ పాస్పోర్ట్ గ్లిజరేట్ ఇస్ యునో దెర్ ఈస్ ఎ ఫార్మేషన్ ఆఫ్ డబుల్ బాండ్ ఇన్ బిట్వీన్ ది సెకండ్ అండ్ ఫస్ట్ కార్బన్ ఆర్ సెకండ్ అండ్ థర్డ్ కార్బన్ ఆఫ్ ది టూ పాస్పోర్ట్ గ్లిజరేట్ ఓకే సో టు ఫార్మ్ పాస్పోయినాల్ పైరుబేట్ ఓకే ఎనోలేజ్ ఎంజైమ్ catalyzes this reaction okay so here this is simply you can also call it as pep manam danni pep anu kuda pilustam phospho enol pyruvate anu pilustam ante in ante double bond anna ol ante oh anna so phospho enol pyruvate అనేటువంటి ఒక కాంపౌండ్ అనేది ఫామ్ అవుతుంది టూ పాస్పోర్ట్ గ్లిజరేట్ నుంచి సో ఇక్కడ ఒక హెచ్ హెచ్ టూ అనేది లిబరేట్ అవుతుంది అండ్ ఇక్కడ పాస్పోయినాల్ పైరువేట్ నుంచి ఈ పాస్పేట్ అనేది రిమూవ్ చేయబడుతుంది డీ పాస్పాలేషన్ టెక్స్ ఇక్కడ చెప్పిన కదా ఎదర్ అడిషన్ ఆర్ రిమూవల్ ఆఫ్ పాస్పరస్ పాస్పేట్ నీడ్స్ కైనేజ్ ఎంజాయ్ సో హియర్ వీఆర్ రిమూవింగ్ పాస్పేట్ ఫ్రమ్ ది పైరువేట్ పాస్పోయినల్ పైరువేట్ కాబట్టి సో దిస్ ఇస్ కాల్డ్ పైరువేట్ కైనీస్ సో పిపి సబ్స్ట్రేట్ ఓకే సో పైరువేట్ కైనీస్ కన్వర్ట్స్ ఇన్ టు సో పైరువిక్ యాసిడ్ ఓకే సో అల్టిమేట్ గా దిస్ ఇస్ ద టెన్త్ స్టెప్ సో విచ్ ఈస్ విచ్ ఈస్ యునో ఇర్రివర్సిబుల్ రియాక్షన్ దెర్ ఆర్ త్రీ ఇర్రివర్సిబుల్ రియాక్షన్స్ ఇన్ లైకోలైటిక్ పాత్ వే ఓకే సో వన్ ఈ two are in the early so first reaction is irreversible second third reaction is irreversible one three and this is ninth step yeah paspo conversion of uh, paspo enol pyruvate to pyruvate okay so in the presence of pyruvate kinase okay so with the help of uh you know adp and magnesium as okay here this phosphate is given to this adp to form an atp so in that okay atp form and overall ga rendu ikkada inkoka atp form and overall ga rendu so 2 plus 2 4 so inkoka atp ekkada form ayindi ante so where 1 comma 3 bisphosphoglycerate is converted into three phosphoglycerate one first position lo oka phosphate undi third position lo oka phosphate undi okay so andulo ఒక పాస్పేట్ అనేది రిమూవ్ చేయబడుతుంది పాస్పో గ్లిజరేట్ కైనేజ్ అనేది చెప్పబడుతుంది బికమ్ త్రీ పాస్పో గ్లిజరేట్ ఓకే ఇక్కడ ఫస్ట్ రియాక్షన్ సెకండ్ రియాక్షన్ రివర్సిబుల్ రియాక్షన్స్ అండ్ హియర్ పిఈపి ఇస్ కన్వర్ట్ ఇన్ టు పైరుబేట్ దిస్ ఇస్ ఆల్సో రివర్సిబుల్ రియాక్షన్ so one and the third okay tenth reaction the one three ten in mood reaction irreversible reactions sabhi ee glycolysis ni you know regulate cheyadam gaani so ekko ga jaragakunda chudam gaani ee one three ten steps okay which are uh irreversible uh, reactions okay so ultimately one glyceraldehyde pass three phosphate forms one pyruvate okay here from one glucose so what we call the uh, two glyceraldehyde three phosphates are formed that means ultimately two pyruvic acids are produced with that the glycolysis will be completed okay so in uh, you know exercising muscles are you know anaerobic organisms like bacteria okay so pyruvate in the presence of uh, you know um, nad which accepts 
the electrons and uh, protons from the substrate okay so it converts pyruvate into lactate so the enzyme is lactate dehydrogenase complex that is a big complex okay anyway uh, that is about the formation of uh, lactate from the you know pyruvate okay so pyruvate is formed from the phosphoenol pyruvate phosphoenol pyruvate is formed from the 2 phosphoglycerate okay so then phosphoenol pyruvate and then pyruvate pyruvate is formed in anaerobic condition it it undergoes fermentation lactate for lactic acid fermentation okay so the presence of lactate dehydrogenase that is called ldh okay so pyruvate is converted into lactate so with formation of pyruvate itself the glycolysis will be completed okay so uh, here how many you know uh, atps are produced okay so in the this is one atp uh, phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate so and uh, here conversion of 1 comma 3 by bisphosphoglycerate into 3 phosphoglycerate converted as a phosphate and the utilize for a single glycerol head 3 phosphate and the ikadok atp form of the and ikadok atp form of the so for single you know uh, glucose sorry single uh, you know 3 phosphoglycerate okay so ikada rendu uh, three phosphate glycerates and it will be nice. Maybe already glycerol had three phosphate form in it. And it got DHA key form in it. Again, it is converted into glycerol and three phosphate. So, after one of the same reactions, it will be higher. Right side ration and it will be the same reactions. Okay. So, anyway, here uh, ultimately. From a single glucose, two pyruvic acids are produced, four ATPs are produced. In the early reactions, two ATPs are utilized. So, in the glycolysis, at the end of glycolysis, two net ATPs are formed and 1 NADH means 2 NADH. So, in the book, it is given that 1 NAD is equal to 4, uh, sorry, 3. So, total, you know, 6. 6 plus uh, 2 net ATPs, total 8 ATPs. Okay, so they are formed uh, at the end of the electron transport. Okay, these ATPs. Actually, the simple epoliente rend ATP lo rend NADH to name it glycolysis and low. Okay, na? so this uh, pyruvate in you know aerobic organisms. So this pyruvate is converted into Acetyl coenzyme A. Co enzyme A convert of the acetyl coenzyme A tells you that joins TCA cycle. Okay, in the aerobic condition, anaerobic condition lo either ethanol is found or lactate is found. Okay, aerobic condition lo pyruvate formation at the end of the glycolysis then pyruvate is converted into acetyl coa okay so which is an intermediate uh, reaction with connecting layer reaction between the glycolysis and pepsin okay it can be the red mark the reactions low uh so it's a very good fluoride and the ikada iso iodo estate are arsenate and the ages they were they prevent that particular reaction so that that uh, Energy production is stopped. Okay, or becomes reduced. Anyway, rape regulation of glycolysis and chapter. So total there are 10 reactions right from the glycol glucose. Okay, in the presence of exokinase or glucokinase. 
ఎక్సోకైనైజ్ అనేది అన్ని టిష్యూస్ లో ఉంటుంది గ్లూకోకైనైజ్ అనేది పర్టికులర్లీ లివర్ లో ఉంటుంది ఎనీవే సో గ్లూకోజ్ ఇస్ కన్వర్ట్ గ్లూకోజ్ సిక్స్ పాస్పెట్ గ్లూకోజ్ సిక్స్ పాస్పెట్ ఇస్ కన్వర్ట్ ఇన్ టు ఎసోమరే ఫ్రక్టోస్ ఫ్రక్టోస్ ఇస్ కన్వర్ట్ ఇన్ టు ఫ్రక్టోస్ వర్కామా సిక్స్ బై పాస్పెట్ బై బై అడిషన్ ఆఫ్ ది ఎయిట్ పాస్పెట్ ఓకే సో ఇట్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఇమీడియట్లీ డిసోసియేటెడ్ ఇన్ టు టు యూ నో సబ్ ట్రయోజెస్ ఓకే సో వన్ ఈస్ అల్లోలే ఇన్ ద ప్రెజెన్స్ ఆఫ్ అల్లోలేస్ వన్ ఈస్ డైహైడ్రాక్సి ఎస్టోన్ పాస్పెట్ అండ్ క్లిజరాల్ హెడ్ త్రీ పాస్పెట్ ఇప్పుడు ఆల్రెడీ మనకు ఒక క్లిజరాల్ హెడ్ త్రీ పాస్పెట్ ఫామ్ అయింది అట్ ద సేమ్ టైమ్ ఆఫ్టర్ ఫార్మేషన్ ఆఫ్ డైహైడ్రాక్సి ఎస్టోన్ పాస్పెట్ ఇమీడియట్లీ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఆల్సో కన్వర్టెడ్ టు క్లిజరాల్ హెడ్ త్రీ పాస్పెట్ కాబట్టి మనకు రెండు క్లిజరాల్ హెడ్ త్రీ పాస్పెట్ ఫామ్ అవుతాయి ఓకే సో రెండు క్లిజరాల్ హెడ్ త్రీ పాస్పెట్ లో ఒక్కొక్క దాని అవుతుంది సేమ్ రియాక్షన్స్ లెఫ్ట్ సైడ్ రాసుకోవచ్చు క్లిజరాల్ హెడ్ త్రీ పాస్పెట్ ఓకే ఇన్ ద ప్రెజెన్స్ ఆఫ్ క్లిజరాల్ హెడ్ త్రీ పాస్పెట్ డి హైడ్రోజనేస్ ఓకే సో ఇట్ ఈస్ కన్వర్ట్ ఇన్ టు వన్ కామా త్రీ బై పాస్పోర్ట్ మిజరేట్ సో హియర్ ఫ్రమ్ ది పైరో పాస్పెట్ పూల్ వన్ పాస్పెట్ ఈస్ అటాచ్ విత్ దిస్ గ్లిజరాల్ హెడ్ త్రీ పాస్పెట్ టు ఫామ్ వన్ కామా త్రీ బిస్ పాస్పో గ్లిజరేట్ అనేది ఫామ్ అవుతుంది సో దాని నుంచి మళ్ళీ ఒక పాస్పెట్ అనేది రిమూవ్ చేయబడుతుంది దట్ ఈస్ ఇన్ ద ప్రెజెన్స్ ఆఫ్ కైనేజ్ ఓకే టు ఫామ్ ఫస్ట్ కార్బన్ పైన ఉన్న పాస్పెట్ రిమూవ్ చేయబడుతుంది ఒక ఏటీపీ అనేది జనరేట్ అవుతుంది ఓకే సో ఏడీ ద రిలీజ్డ్ పాస్పెట్ ఈస్ అటాచ్ విత్ ది ఏడీపీ టు ప్రొడ్యూస్ ఏటీపీ ఇన్ ద ప్రెజెన్స్ ఆఫ్ మెగ్నీషియం ఐన్స్ సో త్రీ పాస్పోర్ట్ గ్లిజరేట్ టు మ్యూటేజన్ ఎంజమ్స్ వల్ల టూ పాస్పోర్ట్ గ్లిజరేట్ యాస్ ఫామ్ అవుతుంది టూ పాస్పోర్ట్ గ్లిజరేట్ అనేది ఎన్నోలేజన్ ఎంజమ్ వల్ల టీఈపీగా కన్వర్ట్ అవుతుంది పాస్పోనల్ పైరోవేట్ అండ్ again a rate limiting uh, step which is irreversible uh, that is pep pep is converted into pyruvate in the presence of pyruvate kinase okay so again here another atp is produced totally manaku uh, 2 plus 2 4 atp and it would be produced at so first two steps lo ikkada 1 and 3 steps lo ATP అనేది యూటిలైజ్ అవుతుంది కాబట్టి సో రెండు ఏటీపీలు మనం రిమూవ్ చేస్తే సో నెట్ టూ ఏటీపీస్ అండ్ టూ ఎన్ఏడిఎస్టీ ఆర్ ఫామ్ ఓవరాల్ గా రెండు ఏటీపీలు అండ్ రెండు ఎన్ఏడిఎస్టీ ఇక్కడ గ్లిజరాల్ హెడ్ త్రీ పాస్పెట్ నుంచి వన్ కామా త్రీ బిస్పాస్పో గ్లిజరేట్ అనేది ఫామ్ అయ్యే దగ్గర మరొక ఎన్ఏడిఎస్ టూ అనేది ఫామ్ అవుతుంది అండ్ సారీ ఒక ఒక ఎన్ఏడిఎస్ టూ ఫామ్ అవుతుంది ఒక గ్లిజరాల్ హెడ్ త్రీ పాస్పెట్ నుంచి ఒక ఎన్ఏడిఎస్ టూ ఓకే సో డైహైడ్రాక్స్ ఎస్టోర్ పాస్పెట్ కూడా గ్లిజరాల్ హెడ్ త్రీ పాస్పెట్ గా కన్వర్ట్ అవుతుంది కాబట్టి రెండు గ్లిజరాల్ హెడ్ త్రీ పాస్పెట్ నుంచి రెండు ఎన్ఏడిఎస్ టూ సో ఓవరాల్ గా మనం ఏం గుర్తుంచుకోవాలి ఇది గుర్తుంచుకోవాలి సో టూ నెట్ ఏటీపీస్ టూ ఎన్ఏడిఎస్ ఓకే సో దే దే ద కన్వర్ట్ ద ఎలక్ట్రాన్స్ విచ్ ఆర్ ప్రెసెంట్ ఇన్ ది ఎన్ఏడిఎస్ విత్ దేర్ మూమెంట్ the electron transport takes place okay to generate 6 atps okay so total 2 plus 6 so it is 8 atps this is very 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 lesser uh, you know energy production but it is also very very crucial for the cellular respiration and you know anaerobic respiration so with this we have completed the first pathway of the cellular respiration that is glycolysis glycolysis means glyco means glucose okay so it ultimately produces a, a glucose is converted into two pyruvic acids in aerobic conditions in anaerobic conditions that is converted into lactic acid that ends there okay so ultimately this these two pyruvic acids are pyruvates they are taken to the mitochondria so glycolysis occurs in cytoplasm whereas uh, electron transport or tca cycle occurs in the matrix of the you know the mitochondria and the cellular respiration which is third phase that occurs in the so inner mitochondrial cancer anyway the glycolysis is also known as emp pathway because mdan meerhof and parnas they discovered in 1930 it occurs in cytosol so these are the 10 steps 
uh, which are involved ultimately to pyruvic acids are produced. From single glucose, two pyruvic acids are produced, two ATPs are produced, uh, net, and uh, two NADH2 are also produced. So with this, we have uh, completed the, you know, the glycolysis. Repu din sammanche regulation. Adi jepta ha, repu, let's discuss tomorrow. Uh, I have to go outside. Um, anyway, I have a suggestion for you. You have to go outside. You have to go outside. That is very, very fine. But for JL, JL Zoology is one of the things. I have to go outside. Gender Studies paper. That is both media. Gender Studies paper. Telulo and English. Okay, so you have plenty of time to cover gender studies also. Subject to plus gender studies, you have plenty of time. This is March, beginning of the March, there is April, there is May. Okay, so what do you want to do? June ending, July postpone, and you have to do jail exam. You have to do time to do that. You have to do that as well as subject to do that. Okay. So, gender studies would have considered change. Etla, etla confident in the alien. So, first option in India, immediately you join any, you know, gender studies coaching online. Online is enough. That's the first option. Easy option. Okay. So, maybe up to 3,000 at long books. Okay. So, but you join, you better join in. A gender studies coaching also in addition to you know this uh, zoology uh, coaching. So Miru Milo over on a beard is now on day while a tells to me a jail job in the job in the country. The beard is now Lugani and the TTC session. Peace at the right. So the normal look in the country. A GT job what they put me luxury about the court to move the punish them. Okay, so if you have the Kepu and Nadra, that's another celebrated job key, and an apparent Danny Pakan with the road, yes, a GT job key. School has to do with that. And exam in the tough one to the day, Tanto Adi Adi DSC were there, ah, hard work pro, and a group one or group two job voters. So compare with you know, a GT job. Jail job is very, very easy to crack. We are in the general studies. Okay, well, the coaching order will be there. First, you take, you know, eighth, ninth, tenth social books. This book. And the low, first, and then the heroes make each suggestion in the end, eighth, ninth, tenth social books. This book. And the low, Telangana, Samanjana. All that the geography goes to history goes. Mutta Chadano start chain. Adi make it in the way first. Second India and Telangana Taravatan the important scope in the area in the day, gender studies law. Current affairs. Okay, we will coaching a lot for them. Last one year, we will Sakshi Gani, Inad Gani. My cell phone is enough. Okay, so Sakshi leda inadu pragati pratiba. Edo unte. Tani follow it is there for the last one year. Epan nunchi from the time of the notification. The notification dagger nunchi meeru exact one year. Yak eli akka nunchi sadhwal. Current type is same in sadhwal. I mean, in Kokaro Chaptana. Okay, so. Okay, current affairs, Rendal Telangana. Telangana and the Star G K Kuda Miru Jendulga Yaith Nunchi tenth class social books Star G K Kuda cover out of the particularly Telangana history, Telangana geography. Okay, so Andalone Miru Yaith and Tenth books on the Andalone Indian history cover out of the Indian geography Kuda cover out of the world geography Kuda cover out of the Okay, so, me coaching well enough, me to go out. 
అంటే మనకు ఎయిత్ నైన్త్ టెన్త్ మన స్టేట్ టెక్స్ట్ బుక్స్ తీసుకోండి ఎన్సిఆర్టి అవసరం లేదు రెండు సేమ్ అయింది ఓకే తెలుగు మీడియం వాళ్ళు తెలుగులో అనేది అవుతూ దాని ఇంగ్లీష్ టర్మ్స్ తెలుగులో ఉన్న వాటికి ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ రాజ్యాంగం అని ఉంటుంది దాని కాన్స్టిట్యూషన్ అని బ్రాకెట్ లో రాసుకుంటే సరిపోదు ఓకే సో అమెండ్మెంట్ సవరణ ఓకేనా సో ఇట్లా డైనాస్టీ వంశము ఎస్టాబ్లిష్మెంట్ స్థాపన ఇట్లా పదాలకు ఇంగ్లీష్ టర్మినాలజీ తెలుసుకుంటే చదవండి తెలుగులో తెలుగు వాళ్ళు తెలుగే చదవండి ఎందుకంటే తెలుగులో కూడా ఉంది కాబట్టి సో పెద్ద టెన్షన్ ఇవ్వాల్సిన అవసరం లేదు తెలుగు మీద తెలుగు మీడియం వాళ్ళు తెలుగులోనే ఎయిత్ నైన్త్ టెన్త్ సోషల్ బుక్స్ చదవండి అండ్ తెలుగు మీడియం వాళ్ళకి ఒక జనరల్ సైన్స్ కి ఇంకొక సజెషన్ ఏంటి అంటే విన్నర్స్ పబ్లికేషన్ అనే ఒక బుక్ ఉంటారు విన్నర్స్ పబ్లికేషన్ వాళ్ళని జనరల్ సైన్స్ కలర్ ప్రింటింగ్ తో ఉంటుంది అందులో బయాలజీ నేనే రాసా అది మా ఫ్రెండ్ అంటే దాని ఎడిటింగ్ వర్క్ నేను చేసిన రాయడం మీన్స్ ఎడిటర్ ఎవరన్నా ఉన్నారు అంటే దానికి దట్ ఈస్ డన్ బై మీ యాక్చువల్లీ ఇంగ్లీష్ మీడియం మాత్రం కంప్లీట్ గా నేనే రాసిన జనరల్ సైన్స్ లో బయాలజీ పార్ట్ ఓకే సో తెలుగు మీడియం వాళ్ళని ఎడిటింగ్ అంటే మిస్టేక్స్ ఎవరన్నా ఉంటే అవి నేను సెట్ చేసిన సో అది చదివితే జనరల్ సైన్స్ మొత్తం కవర్ అయింది మీరు జువాలజీతో పాటు జనరల్ స్టడీస్ పేపర్ కూడా మీరు కవర్ చేయండి అప్పుడప్పుడు నాకు ఖాళీ ఉన్నప్పుడు నేను ఏం చదవాలని చెప్తాను ఈ రోజు చెప్పింది మీరు గుర్తుంచుకోండి ఓకే ఓకేనమ్మా ఆల్మోస్ట్ అందరు పేమెంట్ చేయడం జరిగింది ఓకే ఐ గివ్ యూ ట్వంటీ డేస్ టైమ్ రిమైనింగ్ అంటే మేబీ ఫిజియాలజీ అయిపోయాక నేను రిమైనింగ్ ఫీజ్ కలెక్ట్ చేస్తానమ్మా ఎనీవే I am stopping the recording.